idcwoodcraft.com. Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. If you're in the market for a CNC router and you're still not really figuring out which one you want, and some of the different brands you looked at, maybe a Benchtop or even a Pro Series, if you're, especially if you're looking at a Pro Series, this video is kind of interesting. I was at the AWFS Woodworker Show over the summer of 2023 and came across a lot of different CNC manufacturers. One of them I came across was Legacy CNC and Andy, the owner who did all the design work on the machine, very interesting machines because he has incorporated a lot of different unique aspects into his CNC routers that you don't conventionally find on these freestanding machines. So this video is an actual interview with Andy at the AWFS show where he talks about some of the philosophies behind his company which is specifically more towards uh, getting educational, getting machines into schools and what have you and incorporating other features into the CNC routers that like I said you don't traditionally find in the machines. So I will link the contact to Legacy down below in the description but Give, it a, give this a watch and see some of the really cool things that come on the legacy CNC routers. Well, we're at the AWFS uh, Fair 2023 Las Vegas, which I yesterday decided I was coming down here, and by the last night I was here. Anyway, I, as I'm walking through, I've come across another CNC router that I have seen many of our CNC brothers pick up. It's the Legacy Series, Legacy uh, brand. And Andy here is the owner of the company. You actually started the company. That's right. Right. Started so, so 30 me, years ago. Yeah. Tell, tell me about what, what, what got you started on building uh, CNC machines? Well, we originally built uh, manual turning systems They're called an ornamental mill. We built about 20,000 of those and they're all over the world. But we kept pushing the envelope. What can you do? What can you do? We realized that as soon as we went to CNC and automation, we could do anything. Okay. And that's that's the exciting thing about what we're doing. We can do anything. Okay, so when you say turning system, what, do you, what, what is that? Well, it was a system that supported your material. You ran a router across the top and you could sculpt it to create any shape you want. From okay. a federal style to a round turning early American piece. Okay, okay. So. All right, so anyway, as I'm walking through here, I'm seeing this machine, obviously, so I needed to talk to him. And anyway, that, was so, that was someone else I need to interview and talk about CNC routers. So. What, I mean, as I'm looking at your machine here, Andy, you, you, you've got all kinds of bells and whistles on your machine right here. And so, as he was explaining to me the thought process behind this equipment. So, on the machine, you've got the vacuum bed, four zones, you've got an uh, indexer, you've got this section here that, that's vertical vice. The vertical what? Vice. The vertical, vertical vice. Vertical vice, vice, and... Uh, and then uh, well, you got another addition over there. It's got a tool changer on it and stuff. So, so what what is the the whole concept behind throwing all this stuff on a it's a four by eight machine, right? It's a four by eight machine. Yeah. Our basic customer is small business. I want to be able to say yes to every customer. So if somebody walks in my in my shop and says, "Would you build me kitchen cabinets?" I can say yes. I can I can process sheet goods here. But if they say, "But I want," nice corbels on there. On the bar I want I want columns that have grapevines because we like wine in our house so I want grapevines wrapped around the columns in my kitchen right, island. Right, right. I can carve those for them. I can make anything in any discipline of woodworking. We've automated every single one from inlay to joinery to moldings, turnings and box box production. So yep. this this is the control software and this is uh, you guys have built this software here. Yep. Yep. Okay. This is all custom. Alright and so you have uh, four zones over here, right? But there's no valves that on the machine at all. Mm -hmm. So, so you said it's a. Uh... It's all electronic. So, we have first of all, if I were going to do on the flat table, I'd just go to this screen here. But if I want to use the vertical tables, then all the positions are programmed here. If I want to do it. So the, ver the vertical tables, meaning like the. Uh, this, the joining system we looked at right here. Front. Okay. And then I have a turning this. This is all tied to my turning offset. Okay. All organized nicely. And then from either one of these, I can go to my vacuum control and I can turn on and off whatever valve I want. Yeah. I can turn on 
just the front two because I'm only working on the front part of my machine. And then when I when I activate that, Back up. as soon as I start the program, it will turn those on. Fairly simple. Okay. All right. Very cool. So he's put together the software based on the designs that he has actually uh, built into the machine. Now, there was one other thing about education that we yeah. had. So there's the education aspect. What, what, tell me about the education aspect. Well, the most important thing, I think, is to make sure the next generation is going to be doing some woodworking. Okay. Uh, we need, we need like that. that. We need that industry. Yeah. We need that training. But that generation of kids, to get them to pick up a gouge and let's learn how to carve and spend four days carving something, it's not going to happen. But putting in front of, uh, put them in front of a computer, show them how to take a model, and carbon elk so that's going to be part of my shop project yeah. part of the bed i make or whatever i'm all into that those guys are big on that and they love it and so we have built a smaller machine which is that one right over there that fits into the shop has all the same features it's three foot by five foot fits into the budget for the shop at about twenty thousand for schools for school shops. okay and uh we started doing this about 10 years ago but now most high schools in Utah and high schools all over the country, uh, you can't name a state that doesn't have one of our machines somewhere okay. in a shop. Very cool. Some states more dense. We're at Utah, Utah, almost every shop. Okay. So one of, one of the foundational things is that you, you support the educational system. Yeah. Like IDC Woodcraft supports St. Jude. Mm -hmm. I, put a, I put a huge chunk of our money into St. Jude as a donation. Yeah. But, so So... So that was one of the concepts when you're building these machines is how can you get the flexibility to teach all people, the young guys, that. And the other good thing I like about that is uh, CNC machining, metal or wood, it's a kind of a dying craft. And, and so by, by enabling that, uh, by being a part of the educational system, you're helping that. And what were you saying about some of the kids getting out of school? And well, we had one really sharp kid walked out of high school and got a job at one of our customers factory where they make furniture or they make staircase parts we started at like 25 bucks an hour and that's really common so at high school that you know that's a good starting that's, that's wage right out of high school I don't we, hear, we hear those kind of stories all the time i just had a one of my clients in the booth saying i i need to know which high school because he runs granite granite mail he says you know i think I need to have some more students. Yeah. I'm glad you're training students. Well, I don't do the training. The shop teachers do all the work, but we provide the machinery and a lot of support. Right, now the funny thing was, when I got to this booth, uh, there was a lady sitting here, she came up and started talking to us, and, and uh, it turns out she was a teacher. Yeah. Right, she had she was not working for your company. She's she's a school teacher. So, yeah. all right, well that's very cool. You're helping, helping that aspect too. And education is really important. So. All right, so the idea, is what you were saying before is the the buyer of a machine like this doesn't have to buy multiple machines. You're trying to build all the capability into one machine, so right. a one or two man shop in, in, in his barn can can handle lots of different requests. Yeah, we have a lot of small businesses that are literally running in the garage. Okay, uh, I've got one cabinet maker that comes to mind who does everything in a two car garage and does fantastic work. But the nice thing about it is, is and we refer to most of our people as artisan woodworkers. Okay. So it's not just slam bam box stuff. Right. It's I want to be able to add that upper crust, that extra little detail that my customers are asking for. Okay. And with our machine, it's all again integrated into the design. So how many like woodworkers do you actually pull? And like many woodworkers, uh, when I say woodworkers, we're talking about the guys that build stuff by hand. Sure. And then they kind of say, "Oh, look what the CNC machine can do." How many, how many people you kind of pull in like that? Oh, uh, you know the conversion rate from true hardcore hand tool guys to CNC is pretty small. Okay. Because that that for those people who have built the reputation, they can command a very high price. Right. Yeah. But that's a very small subset of woodworkers. Yes. Yes. Most of us are being pressed for price and time. Uh -huh. I want to be able to do something like a nice carving like this that might be part of a, a piece of cabinetry, but I don't want to take days right. to do that. I need to be able to do that in hours. Right. Well, there's some of the cool stuff that you can do on, on this. So so look at this right here. We got a, a, a four foot bed that in the middle, 
you have you've cut out you put an indexer in there right and then so do i understand right that this can be indexed at an angle as well right right we can elevate this base put any angle you want the idea is is if i've got a a flat bit and i want to cut this surface i need to cut at the same angle if i try and lower it as it moves forward it leaves tool marks all the way down and i've right. got to sand that out i don't like that right, right. <laughs> so i want to be able to make the taper and make it smooth the nice thing about this this system that we built is you can see it does odd shaped things it also does oh, yeah, traditional the, stuff yeah yeah so i can carve this this is about 20 minutes worth of work now if i were carving by hand okay it would be 20 minutes right 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 so, so this is a really unique thing I've not seen in CNC routers before, and that's this. This not only you've you've done this with the indexer built kind of into it, but you've also enabled the the uh, compound. Right. That's that's the word that was in my head. Yeah. Yep. Now here's the other compound you did. Uh, we were showing here before, talking about before. So, explain this concept. Okay, if I want to build a chair. The, and the chair front legs are wider than the back legs, so I've got to t make a tenon that's angled. So all I need to do is set the bed. I use my digital angle finder. I can clamp this down. Then I can use my machine to, to cut my mortises or my tenons. And when I put my chairs together, I've got perfect strong joints, but the angles are perfect. Everything's right all the time. A lot of people do this, but then everything has to be square. Right. And I'm a, I'm a guy that doesn't like limits. <laughs> Gotcha. So, so we try and incorporate that in. So whether it's a simple castle joint, which would be vertical, or a mortise and tenon for a chair, I would be on an angle here. Okay. So I get a better match and, and I get the versatility I want. Okay. And then you've got uh, tool changers down there. Right. So pan down or look at the tool changers there. Um, so how many how many stations? Two, four, six, seven. Seven stations. Seven station. We also do something that's unique. Nobody in, the, nobody in the world does this, but because we build our own machines and write most of our own software, my brother's the whiz on the software okay. stuff, he said, well, what if I needed eight tools for this job? Wouldn't that be a pain to have to shut down or divide my program into two right. separate programs? So if I, if I tell the machine I need eight, when it gets to number eight, it just comes up and asks for the tool. I put the tool in, it touches off on the smart pad, measures the tool, and goes to work. So you can have a whole bunch of, so are these, can, what are these cat? Uh, what are your the the tool the, the cat fives right? Yeah, those are those are ER ER thirty twos. So the, the collet is ER thirty two. Yeah, the actual tool holder. They're cat. They're they're um, no they're. they're ah, that doesn't matter. They're thirties. They're cat. Okay. They're, yeah. All right. So so ISO you know, thirty. So basically, Got what he's saying is, <laughs> if 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 you're working on a job with more than seven tools, mm -hmm. you can have. As many as you want over here, as long as you've got the tool numbers set up properly in your software, yep. and then it'll call the machine to come over here. You manually replace the tool here in the tool or without wrenching it out. It'll re zero. Now you said it that here, right here is the um, that's the touch off. So it'll set the Z for the for the bit. Knows to know where this bit is. It touches off every time. Right. Okay. Right. Now you can put in the tool library, but most new operators. If I substitute a long tool for a short tool, I get them confused, I tear my machine apart. Right. And my spindle, and I cost myself a lot of money. So when we're starting operators, we let them come touch off every single time and then go make. So I'm, I've just made it so easy because yeah, yeah, I never yeah. have to worry about. I may have put the wrong tool in, so I may cut the wrong width or the wrong pattern, mm -hmm. but I'm not tearing my machine up. Okay. So that's a really important feature for me anyway. Because I still make mistakes. So you're using, you're using servos here. These are actually uh, closed loop. They call them easy servos. So it's a stepping motor, has more torque than a servo. It makes more to so torque at low RPM. Okay. Yep. But it's a Why closed so loop long? system because it's a closed loop system. Oh, he's got the closed it's got loop. Got a digital loop counter in there. Okay, so so the difference between an open loop and closed loop is uh, closed loop is basically is the motor is talking to the control software to tell it. I've gotten to where I'm going. I'm doing it the way you tell me to do it. And okay. if, if there's, if something happens, if the mean machine binds up, the feedback loop is not gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna stop the machine basically. Yep. Just uh, shut it down. As opposed to open loop, which the the machine has no idea. It's just 
It's sending the code to the machine saying move this much. And it, the, the control is hoping that it's going to get there. But if the machine binds up, the controls are going to see, keep going. I don't know. It's, it's like telling them someone to run blind. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, is, so this is an actual unit. Is this like your flagship model here? This is the one I build the most and sell, sell the most. This is the 4x8. And we sell it. 99% of the times with the turning center and the joining system all in Okay, so all, the so these are like options you had on. Yeah. Okay. But they're essentially it's packaged into the machine. So Okay. Yeah. So if you if they bought this machine here, all the bells and whistles. All the bells. You got the control software. Yeah. Right. What what mid fifties. Huh? Mid fifties. Mid fifties. Okay. Very good price for the for the home shop guy who's looking for a serious machine. And then uh, yeah, okay. I guess that's about it. Um and you're driving on uh, linear rails here, and it's a uh, rack and pinion. It's rack and pinion. Yep. And uh, you got ball screw going up and down, or yeah, ball screw for the lift. All right. All right. Well, Andy, uh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, no problem. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, this guy's kind of one of those home, the, the down home kind of guys, right? That's kind of the feel I got from talking to you. It's well, like more or less. Give somebody the, the ability to make what they want to make. Our, our focus for, is just to give the people. The ability to automate everything. Right, right. And you and you're built in the U.S. Built in Utah. Utah. Yeah. We okay. still get counted as the U.S. All right. Yes, it still does. All right, man. Thank you for you bet. Thanks yep. a lot. There you go. Very interesting machine coming out of Utah. This legacy CNC router. It's got all these weird contraptions on it that sometimes we try to figure out what we're going to do, how to set these projects up on our machines when they have got them all worked out in their machines. So. Give Legacy a check uh, down in the description. Again, there's a link to their website. And go check it out. Give Andy a call, especially if you want one of these four models that has some extra features to it. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. Have a great day, better tomorrow, and happy CNC. IDCWoodcraft.com.